Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a game day jambalaya in the big black iron pot. Get your pot heated up! Shoo! Awesome. I first added a little bit of vegetable oil to this pot and then coated it evenly. So that way the entire pot had this nice thin layer of oil, which helps with sticking. Then I added my sausage. I picked up this sausage from Bourgeois Meat Market. Very popular market with a very friendly staff. It proved to be smelling delicious because uh, Dash was all about it. Look at that tail. <laughs> Once the sausage really begun to sizzle, that's when I started moving it around. I toned down the volume here so you guys didn't have to hear me scraping the bottom of this pot with metal on metal. But to tell you the truth, I love that sound. Once again, my buddy did not leave my side in case there were any uh, fallen soldiers. <laughs> Right here you can see the grease coming off this sausage is really starting to come out. Uh, it's going to be very useful to brown the vegetables. I began taking the sausage out at this point. It was browned up pretty nice. Used a little sifter to remove it. I felt like there was a lot of grease at the bottom though. So I took a towel and wiped up some of it. That way I didn't have too much grease in this jambalaya. But I left a good bit because you do want to use this to brown your vegetables. Next, I added my onions. This was 10 yellow onions that I diced up. I let them sit for a little bit, then I stirred them around. That sweat from the onions breaks up the bottom. Next, I added my celery in, which was about a stalk of celery. Then five diced up green bell peppers. And I just began working it from here, browning them down. When my onions started to get translucent, I added one fourth cup Pia! seasoning. Yes, indeed. From there, I added 10 beef bouillon cubes. Bouillon! <laughs> and then I just stirred it in, worked it in real good. Got all the flavors incorporated with the Trinity. Right here, I added a little bit of water to the sides of the pot. This helps with breaking up some of the stickage that you see. Also, it adds great color to these vegetables. And don't worry about the water taking away flavor. The water evaporates. Works out great. Here, I added about half a cup of minced garlic. Got that stirred in really good. After that has cooked down for about five minutes, it was time to add the stock. I had deboned six rotisserie chickens, and then I took the remains of these chickens and cooked them down in six 32 ounce containers of chicken stock, along with some onion, celery, and carrot. After pouring this through a sifter into a large bowl, this is what you're left with. This beautiful, rich stock. Look at that, oh my gosh. I had to go slow-mo here because you guys had to see this depth of flavor. It is incredible. Next, I added one fourth cup of hot sauce, and then I added one fourth cup of browning sauce. And I already know how some of y'all feel about this, but you already know what I gotta say. Every time. <laughs> Ain't that right, Gumbo? Amen. From here, I added back in my sausage, and then I raised my fire so that I could get this thing to a boil. Once I had a good boil, I added my green onions in, which was five bunches of green onions, and then I add all that chicken I deboned. Come on, Russia. It was kind of congealed having been in the fridge, so it was good to have this hot liquid break it apart. I knew it was gonna cool down the liquid some, but at the same time, I would be able to get it back up quicker because it was already boiling. Once we got back to a slight boil, I added five pounds of rice. And I just begun to stir that in there so I could submerge the rice into the liquid. Everything was coming along just great. Once I got the rice completely submerged, I brought this back to a rolling boil. Then I covered it up, lowered to a simmering heat, very low. As you can see, as low as I could get it. And then I let this sit for 20 minutes, covered up. And as you can see, Dash was still there. <laughs> After 20 minutes of simmering, I removed the lid and it smelled amazing. I went ahead and turned my fire completely off at this point. And that's when I did my first fluff of this rice. I was getting completely from the bottom and bringing it to the top. Coming along the sides, going from the bottom and bringing it to the top. This is how you get the rice to kind of evenly cook. At this point, it's not done yet, but you fluff it around so that you can get all the rice from the top to go back to the bottom and then it can evenly cook. From there, you cover it up and let it sit for another 20 minutes. The pot's gonna remain hot for quite a while, so the steam in there is gonna continue to cook this jambalaya. So once again, I fluff it up after this 20 minute sit, and you can tell it's starting to come together. The rice is getting fluffier, 
And it's looking like jambalaya, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at that right there. Oh my gosh. Straight deliciousness. I'm rocking those game day jammies because it's an early morning. You know how we do down here. So I cover it up one more time, let it sit for another five minutes, and then it's just good to go. That, my friends, is jambalaya in a big cast iron pot. South America. Look how pretty that is. And it smells amazing. So at this point, it's ready to serve. You know, you just grab some plates, grab your big spoon, serve it up, however you like. And then you just keep covering up whenever you're not serving. And this jambalaya is going to stay hot for a while. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we knock it out. hey -ya! If you want to make a jambalaya like this on a smaller scale, just head to CajunNinjaBook.com and snag my cookbook.